Welcome to the Stitches and Patches Bookmaking Workshop. And what we're going to be doing in this class is building some books using our remnant fabrics to embellish our book covers. Uh, it's a great way to utilize all those beautiful little scraps that maybe didn't find their way into your sewing projects or maybe um, pieces of old articles of clothing that you no longer wear or maybe too beat up. Uh, little pieces of trims are great and any of just those little scraps that you might have had in your collection. Um, we're going to be building these books using reclaimed cardboard for our covers. So that's a material that um, is easily um, at the ready to be used. And then we're going to be strengthening them by adding the fabrics and the adhesives which creates a really strong base for functioning as a book cover. These two books here are books that I created based on everything that we're going to be doing in this workshop. And as you can see here, I've created a little closure with some reclaimed fabric ribbon that we'll be making later on. Um, utilized all different kinds of fabrics from my stash. Um, embellished the cover with some stitching, which then goes onto the inside of the books as well. Now, you can see the pages in this particular book is filled with lots of random paper bits. So what you could start thinking about is what kind of paper do you have at your disposal that you'd like to use up? Um, this one's got lots of craft paper that I embellished with stamps and sprays with lace as stencils. Some old prints that I painted on top of. Plain copy paper. Um, and then also some composition paper. I've got two school-age kids, so we always seem to have lots of partially used composition books each year. And so I save them and take them apart and use the pages that have not been used yet into my own journals. Of course, you could also pick up a composition book at any office supply and implement them into your books as well if you want some lined pages. Um, so this is just a little preview of one of the books. This book here is similar in that I'm using the fabric ribbon as the closure. I've done all of the fabric patches on the cover outside and inside. This one's a little simpler. And again, I've also used lots of different types of paper here. Um, you do not have to use lots of different paper. You can buy a pack of paper from the store and have it all consecutive and consistent. Um, or if you like the little mix up, then you could start going through your paper scrap stash. Uh, this is also a great way, like if you have old um, scrapbook pads, you can pull them out and get them ready. And then what we're also going to be doing is having some fun 
adding a little weaving to the side of the spine. Okay, so for the cover, what I start with is usually just a piece of cardboard. Whenever I get a box in the mail, I try to save the flat, undamaged parts of the box for repurposing into book covers. Or, as you can see on this side, my kids also like to draw on them or paint on them. Use them as canvases. So, it's just another way of repurposing materials that come into your life rather than putting them into the landfill. So this here, as you can see, <clears throat> was the fold of the box in this area. And so I just cut the edges here with an X-Acto while deconstructing. And then I've got a little cardboard stash that I keep going. And then depending on what project I'm working on, I'll pull from there. So this is the piece that I'm gonna be using for the book cover. And you can see here that you can see all of the corrugated lines running through. And I use that to my advantage because that I could then easily just fold up a section and then count over. Let's see, I did one, two, three lines and then came over that way. And just by kind of pushing your finger into that section, you can do the same. And so I've got a little damage here from when I was taking the box apart, but that's fine because this is all going to be covered. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, there are some creases here. Also, that's fine. Um, this is, however, a bit too big in terms of length, so I will be cutting it down. But for purposes of doing this tutorial, this is going to work just fine. Okay. And so just to go back over creating that fold for your spine, an area like this would be a great section to kind of come up onto. Use that as your fold, then decide how big you want your spine to be. And then you can come over that way. Sometimes just using your finger, pushing forward. And then this would just have to line up and then I would go ahead and cut it that way. But now, since this one is a nice book size in terms of width, just a little long. What I'll be doing is I'm going to cut this to length. Now, a few things to think about when you are preparing your book cover is what are the papers you're going to use for the inside. If you're going to be using um, some composition paper, then you'd want to make sure that that composition paper is going to fit within the width of that book with some room to spare because once these are sewn in they will come out a little bit further so generally if you if you leave about an inch worth of space between where your pages end and where your book cover starts that will lend you enough space to work with um, if you like to see your pages come out the size of your book to give it a really chunky, robust feel, then you can go ahead and cut your papers all the way up to that edge so that they will show through. Um, for this book here, I'm going to keep everything inside of the book cover because I'm going to use that little ribbon technique that keeps the book closed when it's not in use. So I want to keep all those pages inside. Um, so I've got the composition paper, but I'm also going to be using some really great cover stock. 
that I picked up a pack from Staples. It was, um, I believe, under 20 bucks for, let me read this here, 11 by 17 ledger size, 125 sheets. It was six, it's 67 pound paper. Um, I'm on the hunt for some recycled cover stock that I can buy at the ready. Um, haven't really found any yet locally. I'm sure maybe somewhere out there online um, I could find them. This was available locally so I just picked it up while I was out and about and that's what I'm going to be using today. Um, it was 17 inches wide so I did cut it down. Uh, cut about two inches off. Easiest way to do that is either by measuring it out with your ruler and then cutting it with your exacto, or if you have um, a handy paper cutter, I like to use these as well. Get you a nice, accurate line. You don't have to worry about a shaky hand. Um, so this is a great tool to have in your studio. So because I like to create my books based upon the materials that I have at hand, um, that will often help determine the size of the book that I am building. Um, so because I've decided that I'm going to use this as my book cover, I have decided to create my book at, that is about just over eight inches wide. Therefore, I made my <clears throat> book pages at about 15 inches, which once folded over, will be seven and a half. So you can see that fits nicely inside the book. So now looking down here will help me decide how big I want the cover to be. And I'm gonna make a little mark. there. And now I'm going to measure. So that's just shy of 12. I'm going to come on the opposite side here. Make a mark there. And that's how I know where I'm going to be cutting. So now I'm going to Draw a little line, connecting those marks straight across, and continue. idea of getting your cardboard ready. You're going to decide how big uh, your pages are going to be, um, whether that is based upon paper that you have at hand or paper that you'll purchase based on how big you want your book to be. Take into account how much space you need to enclose the paper and how much space you need to accommodate all of the paper. One way to find that out could even be you can pre-fold all of the paper that you want to use and measure how big that spine needs to be. Or 
you can wing it like I tend to do. So this is my favorite part. This is the part where we're gathering and deciding on which fabrics to use. I am a bit obsessed with reclaiming old fabrics. I scour thrift stores, church sales in my neighborhood, and I'm always on the hunt for any sort of decorative items like this that was probably for the tabletop, old tablecloths, even bed sheets and pillowcases. This beautiful bit of hand embroidery was on the bottom of a pillowcase that the cotton was all beat up and, and it has this amazing, amazing hand crochet on it. So go on the hunt if you're anything like me and you've already been <laughs> hunting and you have all these things that you wanna use and implement then go on a hunt within your own stash. And what we're looking for here is bits of fabric that can be, that can serve as adornment. I love to use like the Indian fabrics that have the little bits of stitching and embroidery on them. That's gonna be what I would consider like more of the embellishing part of the cover. And then you'll also want something along the lines of, um, of, of a cotton, and I do like to use cotton. I stay away from the synthetics just because the glue dries easier and quicker if it's a, um, a cotton or a cotton blend. For the base, or what I'm going to suggest that you start with, a um, bed sheet cotton weight because it's easy to cut, will help your glue to dry quickly, and it's just going to layer nicely on top of one another. What I'm thinking here, you can see my palette's kind of light and bright, so I'm going to stick with that. Uh, this is a vintage napkin that I just over dyed, so that's also an option. You're not married to whatever color the item actually is. You could either use commercial dyes, you could use natural dyes like uh, tea baths, onion skins. There's all sorts of natural dye experimentations that you can do. Easiest way to cut your fabric. First and foremost, know where your scissors are. They just got lost in the pile of fabric. Oh, found them. So the easiest way to cut your fabric is just to create a little snip. This part here is all uneven. So I'm going to a little snip a few inches in from that uneven section and then I'm just pulling and that creates a perfectly straight edge right along the thread line. couple of things that I want to really point out here <clears throat> is that you really want to make sure that you're covering your edge like by overlapping all the way around. That's going to completely hide your cardboard base. So I've got this piece of fabric that will be great for running over my spine, being able to carry over the edge and into the center. It's fine if it doesn't match up because we'll be patching on top of that. Adding your fabric to your book cover, what you'll want to use is whatever your favorite glue is. I love to use Mod Podge. You don't have to use Mod Podge. You can use any sort of uh, gel medium. I use a nice big paintbrush. I usually pick up the the one inch brushes from the hardware store. Just washed it off, so I'm getting the excess water out. You're gonna be super generous with your adhesive at this point. So I'm really gonna be laying this Mod Podge on evenly. We're not globbing it on, like leaving big pools of it. We're just spreading it out, but making sure that it has a nice heavy layer on top. I'm putting the 
this down here. Therefore, I've got a little extra on the sides. What is that? All right, and then just getting out all the wrinkles, tightening up, finding that fold, so I'll be able to find it again later. I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm getting the sides here, sides of the cardboard. First, I'm going to pull that over nice and snug. and snug. Hey, look at that. They almost meet. Alright. Now, as you're working with the cardboard, it will start to get fragile. So you want to be gentle while it's in this stage. So now, I am going to continue.
All right, so now I'm going to come into here. My edges. And pull them over and then bring these onto the inside. Instead of having a big bulky corner, I'm going to come just shy, maybe about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from that corner. Cut at an angle, like so, and then I'm going to remove just part of the fabric that's on the inside. This is the outside, so I can overlap that and that's going to be covered nicely.
while the cover's drying, a bit longer, what I'm going to do is start preparing the papers. So this was that first piece of paper <clears throat> that we measured the cover off of. So now I'm going to use the this as a template to measure out the rest. Um, again, this paper that I'm using is cover stock weight, which is 65 pound. Um, it handles wet media nicely in addition uh, to any sort of um, drawing instruments like uh, micron pens or marker, pencil, <clears throat> you name it, as well as things like watercolor and acrylic. And so I'm going to use this as my template. Here's a few more that I had cut down already. So I fold each page individually, scoring it. Scoring it meaning I'm just reinforcing that fold. And I'm thinking I'd like to do three signatures in my books just because three is a favorite number of mine. And so I am going to do a combo of three signatures with three groups of papers, mostly with this paper, but I am going to throw in a few of the composition papers. I'm going to pinch them a little bit more. By spending a little extra time with this fold, it's going to ensure <clears throat> that the pages are not as puffy once they're put together. So let's see we got one, two, three. Four. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do I'm gonna go for 12 of, what did I do? One, two, three, four. 12 of the plain white papers in each signature. And I'm also going to do them <clears throat> how many sheets of the composition paper I have, uh, add those as well. like to put a um, different type of paper over each individual um, signature set is some craft paper that I painted on top of 
Whenever I get these in the packaging from shipments, it's always usually rolled up and crumpled, but I open it out and I use it to either um, to paint with the kids or clean my brushes off, but then I like the, the tactile feeling of it. Um, so I so let's clean that edge. Even plain craft paper is fine too, or decorative paper. If you have some, you've been saving. Just measuring it off. Doesn't have to be super precise. Just has to be around the same size. with this is trim down the length in a moment after paper for this group and now let me grab some for the others. All right, that's a nice size book right there. Plenty and plenty of pages to get to work in. Um, what I am going to do before I stitch them in though as I'm looking at these top pages, is maybe stamp a pattern onto the paper while they So now my papers are ready for the book. Here's an example of a smaller book that I put together um, where before I put the glue down, I painted the surface because I wanted to use some lace, kind of experimenting with that. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this in a moment with the other cover that we're waiting to dry. But here's a selection of papers. Uh, this is another one of those craft papers like what I used before. And here I'm using composition paper. And this is a brown um, uh, 
copy paper or computer paper, whatever, whatever stacks you can buy from Staples or Office Max. Uh, so this is another example of some paper groupings. Uh, um, but again, to show you that one that I showed you earlier, this one's heavy on the writing paper. So depending on what your book's going to function as, you could think about that at this point. So before we go ahead and start continuing to embellish our covers, what I want to show you is how to create a template for where your holes are going to be in your spine or on your spine and on your signatures. I'm going to use one of these remnant pieces of paper to use as a template. And so I'm just going to line it up at the edge. that's going to be the size of the spine and we're gonna fold this in half lengthwise it should all line up flush both sides fold that half and half. This is where it gets a little challenging. On a piece of paper this small. You're just going to fold that edge up to the fold. That's the center fold that is. Let me open it up again. And then open it up. So now what we're working with is that paper memory that holds the fold lines. Now you're going to fold that in half. Open it up, and now you're going to fold this one down to that halfway mark that you just folded. Open it up, and then fold the other side onto the middle fold line there, too. So now All of these fold lines that you made in your paper is going to basically be your guide as to where <clears throat> all the holes need to be within the spine and within the signatures. So I'm going to, where these lines intersect, make a circle. You could either use a book all to go ahead and poke those holes through, just like so. I am a big fan of the screw punch. I bought this years and years ago um, off of Dick Bullock, I believe, and it's one of my most used tools. Um, I haven't bought a new tip in a really long time, so this one's a bit dull but with a little extra elbow grease, it does the trick. So 
What's nice with this is that you just come on top of wherever you need to make your hole. A little twist. You do need to use a cutting mat underneath because it will mark your surface. My coffee table has tons of little tiny holes in it from me working. Um, I don't want to say lazy, but impulsively, let's call it that. So now I have the template. <clears throat> and this here, let's come from the inside, how about? I can lay. Now you can see it's a little shy because I used the paper. Um, they're gonna be stitching in for the template. So I'm just gonna use this to arrange how much space I want off the top and how much space I want off the bottom. And I like to do it as close to even as possible. Make my little marks. punch my holes before I start gluing again. Coming right on top. What I like about the screw punch is that it creates bigger holes than the awl, so it makes it easy to stitch in and out because I'm not a uh, traditional bookbinder. I use all different kinds of strings in my sewing process so it just makes life a little easier come the, the stitching part okay so And now, since we are just punching through corrugated cardboard, it is fairly easy. As I said, my tip is not that sharp anymore. So. Takes a little extra persuasion sometimes. As to how these papers are sitting, they do pop out a little bit. If that bothers me at the end, I could always come in and give it a little trim. But for the most part, I think that is a good size book. Feels good in the hands. That's how I judge. I keep coming back to this guy here, so I'm going to just pull the excess fabric off of that. Possibility.
Um, so I'm going to prepare my signatures by putting some holes in them using that template that we made for the spine. And I'm just going to use that center row of holes. And take my first group, taking the middle paper out, and to place that right in there. Lines up nicely because this was remnant. If you don't have a remnant piece, then just sacrifice uh, one of your um, pages just for the length. This way you know that everything lines up nicely. If you do that, you don't have to stick within this. You don't have to cut it to size this small. You can use a full sheet and then mark your um, paper itself with where these holes are on your spine. So now I'm going to use this to make the holes within this group. And I'm going to work with about, let's see, one, two, three, I'm going to work with four papers at a time. So let's pretend that this book is completely dry. For the most part it is. However, the cardboard's a little soft from the moisture from the glue. And um, so I'm just gonna keep that in mind. I'm gonna be a little gentle on it as I'm working because I don't wanna bend the, um, the cardboard too much while it's at this stage to create that um, memory bend, and then that's hard to um, to fix once everything is dry. Uh, one other thing I'm gonna do before I sit, stitch those um, pages in is create a series of holes along the edges, just because once it's all stitched together and the pages are inside, it's um, not gonna be quite as easy to get them all in. That's how we're gonna create that embellished edge. For that, super simple, all we're gonna do here is use an awl and you're literally just poking through all the way, watching your fingers carefully. Let's sew some pages in. So I've got a big fat embroidery needle here and some big fat thread. Um, these are all technical terms and um, you really can use um, whatever you have on hand. Um, if you've got a big bookbinders ease, uh, needle, You can use that if you've got some embroidery needles. I just say use something that's dull, that's not gonna poke your fingers. Um, embroidery floss is good or heavyweight thread. This um, is a great thread I picked up thrifting. Just use something that's um, big and strong. If you'd like to use wax thread, you could also do that. We're gonna be sewing these pages into the book independently, three separate signatures. So we're gonna keep it simple. And um, I'm gonna start coming in from the top. All of the first row. 
pulling it through. And um, I would say pull about three arms lengths worth of thread, double it up. If it's too long, we could always trim. <clears throat> I'm leaving a tail that I can tie once I come back around. So you wanna think about, I usually do about like five inches or length of your fingers, your index and your pinky. And then you're gonna come in through your top hole, pushing your way all the way through. Where did that needle go? This is the fun part. There we go. Finding the needle. There we go. I'm not pulling all the way, just pulling enough to get the needle into the next round. Following the holes through the papers. This is the excess here. I'm gonna move that out of the way while I pull. Then I'm gonna come into the hole down the spine. That way. I'm gonna pull this a little bit more so it doesn't tangle, and then I'm gonna pull from here. There we go. Coming into that top hole, the bottom hole, sorry. Inside the book. Hey, what are you doing there? And... middle hole through the papers which should be nice and lined up at this point I'm keeping it nice and loose so that I can get in and out easily and then into the spine again pulling all the way and this is when you can really start pulling your tension <clears throat> Nice and stiff. And then pulling that starting point, that ending point, nice and tight. And then I'm going to tie. usually just do a series of regular knots. Train. So just did a double knot and now I'm going to do it. Yeah. Nice and snug. I'm leaving a little tail. Okay, first set of papers are in. I'm gonna make sure it's got a nice firm hold. Not too much wiggle. Once those other pages go in, it'll fit a little snugger. But I'm not worried. It's not moving around when I shake. <laughs> Do the shaking test. All right, so let's repeat with the middle. Thank you. 
it over. Coming in through the top hole. a book here people Get some line papers Get some plain papers and it's a nice fit between the papers and the cover All right, so the next step would be a little stitching on the cover. So my book is dried overnight, and now the cardboard and the fabric is nice and stiff. So it's a perfect opportunity to add my thread to the edges and also do a little weaving stitch to the spine. So I am sticking with that same white heavyweight thread. Stitch the book together with. And I'm doubling it up so that my stitch is nice and thick along the edges. together. Make sure my thread is evened out. <clears throat> and I'm going to start from the top. So you could either come through the top or from the inside. It's whatever you like. I'm pulling it through. And then I'm going to put my needle through that loop. And so basically what I'm going to be doing down the edges here is a uh, blanket stitch. I'm coming into the next hole and I'm pulling through that loop. I'm just using my finger here to guide it so it's even. And so you see what happens here is they are locked in with each other. So since I came in <clears throat> through the top, I'm going to continue coming in through the top. If you've come in through the bottom, you're going to continue coming in through the bottom. You just want to be consistent. So Go through that last one twice. And then I'm going to go through that prior loop to make my knot. And I'm going to do that three times just to make sure that it's nice and snug. And I'm going to trim leaving a little tail. So now what I'm going to do here with my extra is I'm going to come in through that loop I'm going to tie a little bit of 
thread, double knotting it, and snipping. nice beautiful stitching and I think this complements my central image and I'm gonna go ahead and repeat on the side So now I'm going to take some more of my thread for the spine. Double again. I'm going to tie that off. I'm going to start on one string, looping through just like we did on that side stitch, just to kind of lock it in pulling it all the way through the top. And now it's just gonna be a series of under and over. Let's move all these little guys out of the way here. And since it's a, like a weaving stitch, you're gonna do opposite. So now I'm on top of this string. So to come back to the next row, I'm gonna come under. under, over, under. And pulling snug. Over, under, over. Pulling out those little stray tassels. This, I think, might be my favorite part, is the little weaving on the spine. So this is the last row that I can fit onto here. So now I'm going to start on this side. So that's about as much as I can go with this thread. So I'm going to knot it off. Like so. I'm going to come in from this side since the knot's on that side. To Okay, so I do have a little bit left. So 
just so I don't waste it, I'm going to add a couple of little tails here. I'm going to cut these a little shorter just because the opposite side is super short. Look at that. The book is completely stitched on my sides. Got the little weaving happening on the spine. This is also going to help keep your pages a little extra snug too, your signatures. In my altered grimoire class, um, I did some stitching onto the cover. So you could also do that. Um, so like for something like this, I can work with this image and pre-punch some holes that I can come around and add a little more stitching too and just continue to just keep evolving. Um, that's the beauty of working with that corrugated cardboard is that just by using a simple tool like a, a book all, you can um, pre-poke your holes and really create um, an embroidered piece of art on your um, book cover using the simplest of sewing stitches just to work around whatever shapes and imagery you have. Coming inside, you can see everything dried really nicely. Um, this guy here, I didn't come on top, but he's glued down really snug. My pages feel nice and snug within. Got my lined papers, my blank papers. All ready to go. And this I'm really happy with because it almost looks like it's stitched onto this back piece of fabric since it was white on white. And the lily, a little stitch work here. And I'm definitely happy with this. Uh, this is a great technique for making a notebook for whatever it is you want to fill it up with. Um, since we uh, do tend to travel with notebooks, well, I tend to travel with my notebooks. Um, I would like to <clears throat> be able to keep this closed. So next I'm going to show you how to make an easy uh, closure that you can take on and off. These are one of my favorite things to make and basically it's recycled fabric twine. It's a great way to go through your stash if you have any random pieces of fabric to make some yardage of really amazing rope or whatever you'd like to call this. All you need is two thin pieces of fabric and just a little bit of a little bit of time. This is something I enjoy doing uh, in the evenings and I'll often just sit and make these while we're watching a movie, hanging out on the couch. It's a great de-stressor for me, this process, because you start with fabric and then you end up with this really beautiful um, uh, functional item when it's all done. Usually we'll work with contrasting fabrics so that you can see the difference when they're twisted together. So this one's pretty subtle because it's white and then there's a fabric in there that has pinks going through. So that's subtle. This one's pretty busy. It's two busy pieces of um, fabrics. And then this one here is the one I really like because it's got this pretty satiny kind of pink, dark pink with this Indian brown um, block print fabric. And then I mixed in a little green and came back to the pink. And I like the way they fabric frees off the edge also. So you could have a lot of fun seeing the different techniques that you can come across 
with your different pieces of fabric. What I do need is a, like a nice length. So anything a little bit more of an arm's length. If you don't have a long piece of fabric, you could always knot them together. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut my little slit and about a half of an inch, a quarter of an inch. Pulling it down. Like so. And then this is just a cotton that I dyed. It was white. I did a little <clears throat> experiment with some tea. Teas. And I think there was some red onion skin in there. Looks like it. I'm just going to take away those little flyaways. And I'm going to line up those two edges and knot them together. All right, I'm going to come a little closer. <clears throat> I apologize for my sniffles. All right, so nice and snug. I've got these two pieces. I'm gonna hold the knot on this side. If you're a lefty or a right, well, I'm a righty, so I'm holding the knot in my left hand and I'm gonna use my right hand for twisting. So I'm gonna twist that top one over and pull down, twisting the top one over and pulling it down. Again, twisting, pulling down, twisting, pulling down. Maybe I should say over and down. Twist, over and down. Twist, over and down. Twist over and down. What I'm doing here is I'm holding this last part and I'm just detangling. Since you are twisting that fabric, your end pieces can tend to get a little tangled up together. So as I keep twisting, I am using my thumb to keep that last twist I made in place or from getting loose. Twist and over. See what happens here. It's those extra little pieces. You can see they tend to get knotted up with each other. So if you can get as much of this stuff off, it might save you a little bit of a headache. So we twist and we pull over, twist, pull over. And that's it, that's all you have to do. And so look at that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's the little things that make me happy. And so, we just keep going. Okay, so now I've just come to the close to the edge of this. If I wanted to make it longer, I could just knot another piece of fabric onto here. And it could be a different piece of fabric or the same piece of fabric. But I'm going to stop because I've got a nice length here for my book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pieces together and knot them together. Pull that nice 
nice and snug. And so now I have this great piece of rope. Ta-da! I find these to be great meditation tools where you can just kind of sit and soothe the soul <laughs> as you're <clears throat> as you're twisting. Um, okay, so I'm going to use this for my cover. And so the uh, question is whether I want to put it on the front or the back. So what I want to be able to do is, I'm going to hold it here for place, is wrap it around and then twist it into itself. So, because it's going to end up twist, because of the length, it's going to end up twisting over the front, like so. So I'm going to knot it through on the back side, because I like this to be in the front. If you wanted this to be on the back, then you'd have to knot it onto your front stitch. So let's see. I'm going to find my center approximately. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so it could be either one of these. I'm going to pull this out, that stitch. And I'm going to push that knot through, it's like so. And then I'm just going to tie it into a single knot. I don't need a big double knot because it's got that knot there already. And that should do it. This is a nice heavyweight thread, so I'm not worrying about that tearing it. And I'm also not going to be necessarily pulling it that hard. It's just simply working as a closure. So I'm wrapping it around, pulling it over the front, and then I would just twist it. And that is it. That's the book. Um, you could add little elements to the end here, like if you wanted to tie a bead or a charm or an amulet or a stone or a seashell, whatever you like. Um, that would be a fun place to add something. Uh, even over here, you can add a little doodad, maybe a tassel. possibilities are endless, obviously. You can keep going and keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, you know, like even with this technique here where I'm tying off these threads, you can continue tying all sorts of things onto the sides of these um, that you like. I'm keeping it simple by just doing the corners with the same thread, but ultimately um, you can continue just to evolve it and really make it into something um, extraordinary. Um, you can come back in and pre-poke some holes around your little square, patchwork squares, and add a little stitching um, in different colors or the same colors. Uh, usually when things stay within my orbit for a certain amount of time, they will get adorned more and more as the time passes by. But as of right now, I'm super happy with this. And um, I think this is a great stopping point. And it's not only beautiful, but it's super functional. It's a great takeaway book that I can carry around. Um, or I can put it on my shelf as an object of of beauty and inspiration, or it could even be a great gift for somebody to inspire them to, uh, you know, study what their heart, what sparks joy in their heart. So I hope you enjoy this process, and I would love to see um, your books, anything that you um, you create using any of these techniques.
tag me in the post or send it over to me because I would definitely love to see what you create. So thank you so much for joining. I hope this process brings you joy. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you.